Good morning, viewers at home. Welcome to the program, Super Dawn. I am Vera Super with you on this edition of the program. Well, today we're going to go through the papers as usual, and um, you have opportunity of being part of that segment. Um, you could SMS us right away, or you tweet at us um, so that we can get some of the your agitation or your resolution or some of the solution that you have with the papers this morning. We'll be expecting that during that segment. And secondly, we want to look at foreign, you know, financial foreign assistance. Um, recently, we helped Guinea-Bissau. We want to look at that, helping um, other countries. And in here, actually, we also need help. So how do we have AIDS? How do we contact people to also help us while we are rendering help to the neighboring countries is very important on that segment we're going to open the phone lines for you to call and make your contributions once again good morning to you we will start off with the newspaper review segment uh, but first let's go on this break and when we come back we take off from there we'll be right back super dawn your daily live current affairs program where topical issues that border on politics, economy, sports and sizzling national issues are analyzed now holds every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Super Screen Television. Let your voice be heard. Join us. Welcome back. It's the newspaper review segment. And uh, it says here, I want to start with the new telegraph this morning. And it says, Buari to labor. Don't let politicians use you. I like that. And it says, receive 30,000 recommendation for new minimum wage. I think we need to get that story. The president is saying, talk to, speaking to labor, do not allow politicians use you. Let's read that story. <clears throat> President Muhammad Buhari yesterday has received the recommendation of 30,000 as minimum wage from the Terpetide Committee on the review of national minimum wage, where he advised labor unions not to avail themselves for use as tool by politicians. The President, while receiving the report at the presidential villa in Abuja, assured that he was committed to a new minimum wage for Nigerian workers. President Mohamed Buhari told committee led by the former heads of service of the Federation, Ama people, may I therefore employ workers and their leaders not to allow themselves to be used as political weapons. Well, President is saying, do not allow yourself to be used. We also have here, <clears throat> Senate probe NMPC over diversion of $1.05 billion NLNG dividend. You have in the papers also from the president, Buhari. I'm depressed by killings in Niger. President Muhammad Buhari said that he is distressed and depressed by the atrocities, techno religious killings across the country. The president appealed to Nigerians to learn to live together in peace and harmony. Buhari spoke yesterday while receiving the leader of the Church of, Ch Church of Christ in Nigeria, that's the COCIN, at the State House led by Reverend Dachulmon Datiri. <clears throat> He's depressed by the killings in Nigeria. 
We also have in the new Telegraph this morning. We take some of it uh, this morning. Lagon blames Plato killings on traditional and religious leaders. The Plato state governor, Simeon Ladon, yesterday blamed communal community leaders, including traditional and religious leaders, over crisis in the state. The governor who challenged various communities in the state to expose criminals and hooped lumps in their areas, henceforth said he would hold them responsible for any outbreak of violence. <clears throat> Buari asked Senate to confirm Dabiri, Azua, and others. We also have here four APC reps defect to PDP, LP, and others. The outcome of the recent primaries have continued to take toll on the ruling on the All Progressive Congress. Four members of the party in the House of Representatives yesterday defected to the opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP, Accord Party, Labour Party, and African Democratic Party, the ADC. Speaker Yakubu Dogora announced the defection after resumption of the plenary yesterday from the two weeks recess. Those who dumped the ruling party included Honorable Dada Awoleye. That's from your state. We have Shegu Honorable Shegu Williams, Ogun State, Honorable Lawala San, Zamfara State, and also we have Honorable Adedapo Lam Adeshino, or your state. But you need to read more. You have to get hold of the New Telegraph. Finally, from the New Telegraph, we have um, this one. It says, Atiku Tubuari, your claim on rice production fake. The presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Laji Atiku Abubakar, has faulted the claim by President Muhammadu Bari's administration that its biggest achievement was reducing Nigerians' de de dependence on foreign rice. Atiku, in a statement by his campaign office, recalled that President Muhammadu Buhari told British Prime Minister Theresa May on a April 16, 2018, that his administration cut rice importation by about 90%, made lots of savings on foreign exchange, and generated employment. The PDP candidate, however, noted that that data recently released from the United States Department of Agriculture, World Markets and Trade Report, has proved that these claims by Buhari and his administration were fake. But we'll move away from the new telegraph. And let's have some stories in the new in the nation newspaper. Workers excited as Buhari accepted his thousand proposal. And the writer says executive to transmit bill to National Assembly. Workers were excited yesterday over the coming thirty thousand minimum wage. Said I am fully committed to having a new national minimum wage act in the very near future, says President Muhammad of Buhari. He was receiving the report of the committee set up to resolve the wage problem. Nigerian Labour Congress President Yakubu Waba led the way in the hauling the presentation of the 13,000 minimum wage recommendation report to the president. President insists on $1.04 billion dollars Malabo oil suspect trial. The controversy over the Malabo oil block won't just go away with President Muhammad Buhari's rejecting Attorney General Abubakar Malami's proposal on how to resolve the impasse. Buhari is insisting on the continuation of the criminal proceedings against some suspects implicated in the OPL 245 scandal. Ex air chief Amosu likely to forfeit 2.2 billion. Hearing on Monday, I think we need to get that story. Okay, it says EFCC six final for feature of ex air chief 2.2 billion and others. The economic prim the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed a motion for a final for feature of 2.2 billion recovered from the Chief of Air Staff, Marshal Adeshola Amusu. Justice Mojishola Olatu Regun had on, on the June 7th ordered 
the money's temporary feature based on an ex parte application by the commission. The judge ruled an interim order is made for featuring to the federal government of Nigeria to the sum of 2.244,500 found recovered by the commission from the first respondent, Amosu, which sum is reasonably suspected to be proceed from unlawful activity. Well, the court will let us know well about that. Four policemen held for burglary at Equerimadu's home. The police declared yesterday's security incident at the home of the Deputy Senate President Ike Ikerimadu as burglary and not as assassination attempt. Giving an initial report of its investigation into the alleged assassination attempt on Equerimadu, police spokesman Jim Omochud said four policemen who were on duty at that time of the invasion of his home by gunmen had been arrested. A member of the Civil Defense Corps on duty there is also under arrest. Uh, Senator says it was assassination, assassination attempt. That the, the uh, police, they are saying, police spokesman or should, um, Jimo is saying, no, it's not. That's not an assassination attempt. It was burglary. They're coming to steal from your home. Nigerians immigrant top list of Africans sending money home, says CBN. Nigerians milligram now top the list of Africans making the most remittances back home. The Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Umifili had said yesterday. He spoke in Abuja at the opening session of the workshop of remittances household survey. When I heard the news, I smiled. Why would you send money home? Do they know what is happening in Nigeria here? Okay, and it's very important they send money home. We also have this, more university join also strike. And the writer says, UI photo, others grounded. More universities have joined the strike declared by the Academic Staff Union of University ASO. The academic activities were grounded yesterday at the University of Ibadan, Ladoke Akintola University of Technology, Bumosho, and Federal University of Technology, Uwirifuto. As lecturers stayed away from classes and students were seen idling. INEC begins display of voters registered today. The Independent and National Electoral Commission, INEC, today begins nationwide display of registers of voters ahead of the 29 general election. Well, this is in the nation newspaper. And I, 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 I must say here yeah, that we should all go and check, go and verify. You might be mistaken. So just go and confirm. It's very important. Okay. In Mifili, Southwest ahead with 18% financial exclusion target. We also have here make payments on I, I wouldn't mention it it's not an advert <laughs> i want to give them adverts okay in the in the nation business it says lifting economy with substantial banking principle you want to know how to lift economy with sustainable banking principle you need to get hold of the nation newspaper finally from the nation newspaper wage crisis and leaders pay by Banji Ujewale. You need to read up. It's in the papers. Moving away before we go on this break. Okay. Okay, let's take the, some of the headlines that we can go on a break. The Panj. Southwest governors divided over bids to remove Oshomole. I think we need to take that story. This has been on for some weeks now. And the Southwest governors, they are topping the news with um, trying to pull out a shumali. Okay, APC crisis. The Southwest governors divided over the bid to remove Oshomole. Southwest governors are divided over national chairman of the ruling all progressive Congress, Adams Oshomole. The punch has learned. 
all the six governors from the zone are members of the APC. Um, the punch correspondents learned that while some are committed to ensuring Oshomole's removal as a result of the crisis generated by the party's recent primary election, others are against the alleged move. Those against the Shomola removal are said to be the governors in the camp of the party's national leader, who is also a former governor of Lagos State, Asiwaju Ahmed Tunumbu. They, they include the Lagos State Governor, Akiwumi Ambode, Oshun State, Oyo State um, Governor, Ogun State Governor, Senator Obikuli Musu, and Ondo State Governor, Rutimi Akeridulu, have been at the loggerhead with Oshomole over the failure of the party's National Working Committee to endorse their preferred candidate in both governorship and the National Assembly primary. This has been on for long, and I thought by now, looking ahead, you know, towards the presidential election and all the elections come 2019, this should have been resolved. Igbo monarch sets December 28th to end Osu caste. Major traditional rulers in the southeast have set December 28, 2018 to abolish the controversial Osu caste system in the region. In the Igbo tradition, the Osu are said to be dedicated to deities, while the Uhu are said to be slaved by the birth. According to a statement on Tuesday, the event marking the abolition of the Osu caste system in Igbo land will take place at the Inri Palace in Anambra State. But we will continue with these stories and some headlines, but we must go on a break now. We'll be right back. Super Dawn, your daily live current affairs program where topical issues that border on politics, economy, sports, and sizzling national issues are analyzed. Now holds every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Super Screen Television. Let your voice be heard. Join us.
These are tips to help stay strong and healthy. Learn to do stretching exercises when you wake up. It boosts circulation and digestion and eases back pain. Studies have shown that eating a proper breakfast is one of the most positive things you can do if you're trying to lose weight. Breakfast keepers tend to gain weight. A balanced diet includes fresh fruits or fruit juice, a high-fiber breakfast cereal, low-fat milk or yogurt with wheat toast and a boiled egg. Many people do not know how to brush their teeth properly. Improper brushing can cause and much damage to your teeth and gums. It's not brushing at all. Lots of people do not brush for long enough, floss nor see a dentist regularly. Hold your toothbrush in the same way that you would hold a pencil and brush for at least two minutes. This includes brushing the teeth, the junction of the teeth and gums, the tongue and the roof of the mouth. Get your daily calcium by chugging milk or eating yogurt. It will keep your bones strong. Remember that your bone's density declines after the age of 30. You need at least 200 mg daily, which you should combine with magnesium, or it simply would not be absorbed. Tomato is a superstar in the fruit in Virgil Pantheon. Potatoes and tomatoes contain lycopene, a powerful cancer fighter. They're also rich in vitamin C. The good news is that cooked tomatoes are also nutritious, so use them in pasta, soups and casseroles, as well as salads. Tomatoes and apples can reduce the risk of asthma and chronic lung diseases. Both contain the antioxidant carcerin. To enjoy the benefits, eat 5 apples a week or tomato every day. We need at least 90 mg of vitamin C per day and the best way to get this is by eating at least 5 servings of fresh fruit and vegetables every day. So hit the oranges and guavas. Folic acid should be taken regularly by pregnant moms and people with a low immunity to disease. Folic acid prevents spina bifida in unborn babies and can play a role in cancer prevention. It is found in green leafy vegetables, liver, fruit and brain. Vitamins help to boost immunity agent diseases. It also assists in the healing process of diseases such as measles and is recommended by the World Health Organization. Good natural sources of vitamin A are kidneys, livers, dairy products, green and yellow vegetables, papaw, mangoes, chili peppers, red sorrel and the red palm oil. Do not have soft drinks or energy drinks while you are exercising. Stay properly hydrated by drinking enough water during your workout. Just don't overdo things as drinking too much water can also be dangerous. Do not eat Yes. Stick to fruits and fluids during that hour, but avoid beer. Don't smoke and if you smoke already, do everything in your power to quit. Don't buy into that granny granny smoked and live to be 90 crude. Not even the tobacco giants believe in it. Have a pap smear once a year. Not on our list of favorite things, but it's vital. Cervical cancer kills 200,000 women a year, and it's most prevalent from the cancer of blonde black people. Pretty much everyone agrees that fish is healthy. Living is particularly true of fatty fish like salmon, which is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids and various other nutrients. Studies show that people who eat the most fish have a lower risk of sorts of diseases including heart diseases, dementia and depression. The importance of getting enough quality sleep cannot be overstated It may be just as important as diet and exercise if not more. Poor sleep can drive insulin resistance and throw your appetite hormones out of whack and reduce your physical and mental performance. What's more, it is one of the strongest individual risk factors for future weight gain and obesity. One study showed that short sleep was linked to 89% increased risk of obesity in children and 55% in adults. Drinking enough water can have numerous benefits. And one important factor is that it can help boost the amount of calories you burn. According to two studies, it can boost metabolism by 24 to 30 percent over a period of 1 to 1.5 hours. 
Welcome back, where we need to um, take some of the headlines also and some stories. In the punch this morning, this says, I'm committed to giving Nigeria new minimum wage soon. Buhari, and uh, we have here, we can't meet ASO's demand for now. Minister, I think I need to read that story. The minister said they cannot meet um, ASO demand now. The federal government has appealed to the striking members of the Academic Staff Union of University to exercise retraint in their demands from the government. The Minister of Education, Adamu Ademu, said at the press conference in Abuja on Monday night, ASO's problem with the government began during Omoro's Yaradua's administration in 20, 2009. The minister said the federal government would have fulfilled its obligation to ASU if international oil prices had not crashed about, um, that's after 2009. Adamu said previous administration made promises to the union when the economy was robust. He said the federal government provided an agreement in 2009 for funding the university to the tune of 1.3 trillion over a period of six years. Adamu said the issue necessitating this strike date back to 2009 when the then government of the late president, Umaru Yaradua, signed an agreement with ASU on the funding of federal university. The agreement provided for funding of university to the tune of 1.3 trillion over a period of six years. It is instructive to note that Nigeria was experiencing oil boom at that time. It was therefore expected that government will meet the terms of agreement. However, the international oil prices crashed in subsequent years, thereby throwing the country into an economic hardship. At the inception of this administration, the country's economy fortune worsened, nose diving into recession with dear consequences on the sector of the economy, including education. Um, on and on, you need to get hold of the paper to read more. But they are saying they cannot, coming from the federal government, meet ASU's demand now. We also have in the, in the punch, six soldiers missing after Boko Haram clash. No fewer than 16, okay, sorry, 16 soldiers. No fewer than 16 Nigerian soldiers have been reported missing following clashes with Boko Haram in the Lake Chad area, military and military sources told AFP on Tuesday. The news agency reported that the incident began when gunmen in several struck attacked the military base and the local markets in the town of Cook. Kawa late on Monday briefing focusing troops out of the base. Well, this is not a good one. The Boko Haram sets are still terrorizing. And now 16 um, soldiers are missing. We won't stop Ganduje's probe. The Kanu State House of Assembly on Tuesday said it will not stop the probe of Abdullahi Ganduje, the state governor, over a video of him allegedly collecting bribe. After video of the governor allegedly receiving kickbacks went viral, the assembly set up a panel to investigate the issue. A Kanu State High Court had ordered the State House of Assembly seven-man panel investigating the $5 billion bribery allegation against Ganduje to stop further investigation into the matter. But they are saying... We're not going to stop that. We will continue. We have here a picture story in the punch this morning, and it says, Prince Charles Council trip to just over security concerns. The picture story is showing Duchess of the Cornwall, uh, Camilla, the Prince of Wales, Charles, and President Muhammad Buhari during the visit of Prince Charles in Abuja on Tuesday. We also have another picture by side by side of that one, and that's um, um, Obi of Onicha, Igwe Afred Achebe. We have Sultan of Sokoto. We have the Prince of Wales, Charles, and we have Oni of Ife. We have the Oba Enito.
Ogulusi is there. We have the Emir of Kanu, Mohammed Sanusi Lamido. We have the Oba of Benin and the Nupe, Etu Nupe, Alaji Yaya Abu Baba Baka during the visit of Prince Charles to the traditional rulers in Abuja. I like that picture, Stari. I don't know if they can put that again. Where you see Prince Charles um, raising a finger, pointing, very excited, um, in the midst of our traditional um, rulers. I love the pictures seen there. Well, this is a, a nice one. We also have in the punch this morning, and it says, um, the AM business of the punch, preparing personal finances as entrepreneurs. And here also say the high, high, high cost of shame. Well, Senate probes NMPC over diverted 1 billion NLNG dividend. The Senate has begun an investigation of diversion of $1.05 billion from the Nigerian liquefied national gas dividend account by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. The upper chamber is specifically probing all the withdrawal from the account and how the funds were spent. The chairman Senate Committee on Petroleum Gas, Senator Bassi Akpan, raised a point of order at the plenary on Tuesday to urge the lawmakers to probe the withdrawal of withdrawal and payment. Well, we'll see how that goes. Subscriber lament as Econet shot. Kwesi TV, subscriber to Kwesi TV in Nigeria has expressed dissatisfaction as abstract manner in which the satellite television company ended its pay TV. Some of them said they only noticed that something was amiss when only 14 channels were showing out of 6 to 5 channels on the cable TV. CBN plans framework to support remittance inflow. We also have here bankers orders to drive financial inclusion with Fintech. Finally, from the punch, we'll take this story. And it says here, Brazil quarter three domestic oil output falls by 9.3%. Okay, um, I think this is where we end the newspaper review segment. We will go on a break now, and when we come back, Super Dawn will continue. Please stay with us.